The road can be unforgiving. So can the schedule makers, especially in the toughest conference in college hockey. How would Penn State fare playing seven out of 10 on the road in front of packed arenas? We'll find out as we join them on a journey that only strengthened their resolve. Welcome to the Penn State Hockey Story. It is the fastest team sport in the world, and here it seems even faster. Hockey at Penn State is an awesome spectacle. The, goal, fires and scores! the players are a reflection of our people. Picks it up, fires and scores! With a DNA inscribed by the work ethic of all of those who came before and inspired by the roar of the greatest student section in college hockey. Simple but elegant blue and white uniforms worn by players who always put the team first and yet their game is complex. Perpetual motion, toughness and courage mixed with artistry and finesse. Shot score! And all of their work has brought them here to the intersection of evolution and immortality. Seven seconds in, what a start! Minute by minute, day by day, Penn State hockey is chasing history. Their journey is our reward. This is passion. This is pride. This is the Penn State Hockey Story. Penn State an opportunity to do something they've never done in program history. And that's win all 10 non-conference games. We're taking on the Rochester Institute of Technology Tigers. A home and home between Penn State and RIT. First game back from break, so we just got to stick to what we do, play simple hard hockey, and hopefully we'll come out on top. The three-week break was over for the Nittany Lions, but Kevin Wall was still home for the holidays as he returned to where he grew up and put up big numbers. Wall bananas up the far side of Soulier. Wall with a head of steam through center ice, down the left wing. Wall on his backhand, tries to throw it in front, they score! Took a deflection off a of Tiger. Kevin Wall's gonna get the goal. Throw it to the net and good things will happen. It had to be Kevin Walls. This is sort of the loudest cheers you'll probably see for a road game goal. Kevin Wall got the whole side on our end of uh, the arena. Fan standing ovation. Kevin Wall, we mentioned just a few miles down the road. Turns it over, Paquette with the breakaway now. Paquette with speed, Paquette on his forehand, back in, score! What a finish from Tyler Paquette! Forehand, backhand to the back of the net, he buries it to give Penn State a 2-0 lead. Well, take away by Calder, he fires, saves Scarfoni, rebound, score! Ashton Calder! Cleans up the loose change, gets his own rebound, and puts it in the back of the net. Penn State leads 3-0. Beckham clears up for Kerwin, two on one, developing Kerwin in for Wall. Wall, shot, score! Kevin Wall roofs it! Kerwin feathered it in. Partial breakaway for Kevin Wall, and he goes high glove over Scarfoni for his second of the game. Linden strips him of the puck to Geneva. Centers Calder, score! Ashton Calder one times it into the back of the net for his second goal of the game. 
It's a power play goal, and Penn State leads it 5-1 with 5.15 to go in the second period. Below the goal line, Wall. Wall shields it. Banana's up the near side now. Wall turns, fires, and they score! The puck found its way past Scarfoni, and it's Connor McEachran. Penn State closed out the calendar year with a home-and-home -home series against RIT, taking the first game 6-1 in Kevin Wall's backyard in Rochester, New York. It's a W, baby. Yeah, Hometown hero getting her done. Eh? A lot of guys had good games tonight, but uh, besides the points, this guy was winning battles, blocking shots. Unreal out there tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, this will be one that I'll remember forever, but that was also team-wise. That was a hell of a game, um, you know, start to finish, kept the foot on the gas. Um, let's start the second half off on a good note on the Saturdays, huh? Okay. Yeah, I grew up neighbors with him. Kevin Wall, one of the most humble men you will ever meet. Heck of a hockey player, came to his hometown, put up two goals and an assist. What an amazing night. I love Kevin Wall. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. It's unbelievable. Um, you know, growing up in Rochester, wanting to play college hockey, um, be able to do it senior year here in RIT, just have family here. Um, dream come true. I mean, it couldn't have drawn it up any better. Just a lot of fans that came out to support, and it means so much to me. Seems like all of Penfield, New York, came out to cheer on the hometown boy. <laughs> Next day, Hockey Valley, Wall's new home. You're watching the Penn State Hockey Story. <laughs> One thing the Nittany Lions know is they have friends and fans everywhere, but nowhere is their family tighter than in their own locker room. New Year's Eve at Pagula, and they were looking to finish the year with a perfect non-conference record. Kellenberger, far side, another one-timer, saves Soulier. Dylan Gretton holds. Scarfoni has to block her way, a long shot from the point. Now they throw it in, they score! Chase McLean with the redirect in front for his first goal of the year. McLean's first goal of the season, one of a few first on this, the last day of 2022. Alex Servagno rips it underneath the crossbar. Somebody grab that puck, Sarlo does. It's his first career goal. Souvenirs from the year the Nittany Lions hated to see end, as it ended with an undefeated 10-0 non-conference record for the first time in team history. Mick Meneman looking for the empty net, gains his own fire, scores! Three to one the final in a year ending sweep of RIT. He's been at the helm for every season as a Division I team. It's an amazing program he's established here. And at Penn State, he has built a powerhouse. This is going to take everybody, I can tell you that. So every single guy better be committed to being a 200 foot player. You want to achieve all of that? That's the key right there. So let's take a look. If you back check well, you're going to get opportunity. But I don't know how many. So you better take advantage of the one you get. So let's execute. Transition hard back the other way, three on two. You guys, don't let them get to our net, OK? Be tough, box out, make sure you take sticks. You guys, give them hell in front and score some goals. Lampa, your line, Doc. You and Pauly, Sully, you got it. I'd say he's very competitive. One of the most competitive people I know. Like, if you would ask him to, to do something, like, he wouldn't do it for a year, and he would do it every day for a year so that he would beat you in it. Like, he won't play golf unless he thinks he'll beat you, or he won't play ping pong unless he feels rested, because if he's tired and you beat him, like, he won't have that. I don't know. I think I'm just fortunate that we do have guys here that aren't very good at ping pong and things like that, so I get to, I do get to win a lot against them. That's, that's how it works. Oh! What happened there? What happened? No, he. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> they, he brings out his hecklers to try. That's the only way he wins. Gads is unbelievable. I think it's really special when when we can have that relationship with a coach as as I do with him. He's he's amazing. He's uh he's an unbelievable person. You no, know, he doesn't take 
the approach of player and coach relationship where it's, you know, just a business. It's when you come here, it's a relationship and it grows after you're gone. Gads is awesome. I mean, he's truly, uh, a lot of coaches say they care about the person and that's not always true per se, but with Gads, it truly is. He cares about you, how your family is. He gets the time and takes the time to meet your parents, know your parents truly cares about your academics, really cares and wants to know you as a person. I think that's what makes the bond so special. He's a really personable guy. You know, he's a guy you could text and you don't feel, you know, nervous or if you want to go talk to him in his, in his office, it's not like you're stepping on eggshells around him. He likes his feedback and, you know, I know he's done great for the program here. I mean, you could talk to him about anything. I could call him on a random Wednesday and he'll answer the phone and have a conversation with me if I need to. I think he's been uh, almost like a father figure, uh, you know, both in the rink and uh, outside the rink. He's been so uh, helpful. He's just a great tutor. Um, and it's just, it's truly uh, a great friendship he's created as a coach, which is tr something special and doesn't always happen. You know, I think he's obviously a great representative for the community here and, and for the whole hockey program and universities. I think the reason that Penn State grew so fast is because of him, his, his attitude towards the game and towards winning and towards, towards building a good culture of good people. I think it, it goes all, all the success goes to him. He's, like I said, he wants to win at everything and you feel that and you want to win for him when you're here. I mean, this is a, I think it's a privilege for everybody to be here because it's, it's something, you get a chance to build something that I think everybody thinks is going to be, uh, sky's the limit. Uh, and it, it's fun to be a part of that. And when you have really good people, like we do with our alumni, with our student athletes and our staff. I mean, it's just fun. You go to work, you have a great time, and I think everybody really understands the vision and what we want to end up being. That's it, Pat. That's it, Pat. Come on, win and use it. The new year brought new challenges, a return to Big Ten Conference action, a return to the road, 5th ranked Penn State visiting 17th ranked Michigan State. Oh, yeah, he's talking to the guy making a Nutella bagel sandwich. <laughs> this guy. Playing Michigan State, first Big Ten games back. Um, starting off the second half of the Big Ten season, so we're excited to get going. How's that? Pretty good. And we'll add that this marked the 12th time in their last 14 games that Penn State was facing a ranked opponent. You know who won? That's a lucky one. Relaxed and ready, the Nittany Lions knew they had won the opening game of all 11 series they had played so far. A refreshing way to start. Of course, preparation is key in starting well. Not only have the Nittany Lions won every series opener, but they almost always score the game's first goal. But early against the Spartans, players entered the net more easily than pucks. Lampa deep slot, Crespo, handcuffed by that pass. Crespo fires and scores! It's the net! Jared Crespo on the power play with his first career goal! And Penn State strikes on the five on three to take a one nothing lead! Penn State took the play to Michigan State much of the night, but goals proved very difficult to come by. Puck Paquette splits the D, loose between the circles, fired left, oh, save, save, zero, Greg, rebound, back, back door, Paquette, rising shot, and sprawling across from left to right, he is stoned by St. Cyr. Feeling good, we had a lot of chances. One will fall, We're, we'll be good. And they were, continuing the offensive onslaught and finally getting rewarded with a second power play goal. Jadiev, far circle, backdoor feet, tucked on, fired into the goal, Penn State scores! At the side of the net, Tor Linden rams it into the yawning goal, and Penn State strikes on the five on three and takes a two nothing lead. The Lions lost that one in overtime, but were right back at it the next night. Wall grabs it in the low slot, fires and scores! A spectacular goal by Kevin Wall! But for the second straight night, the game went to overtime, and this one ended in a 4-4 tie. Connor McEachern scored in the shootout with Michigan State getting the extra Big Ten point. The Nittany Lions still have not lost back-to-back -back games all season. They say clothes make the man. 
in Hockey Valley, perhaps they make the team. As the Nittany Lions prepared to host Notre Dame, a peril was on everyone's minds, second maybe to food. Free pizza for sorority rush on Wednesday. South will be there. For the fans, it was the annual wear white game. For the players, it was their first chance to wear their new alternate jerseys. 5 p.m. start. It's exciting. I like the earlier games. Easier to be riled up for them. Shorter day. Uh, it's a whiteout, so that's going to be insane. Wear white. Yeah, wear white. Sorry. <laughs> the white out. Seen the jerseys? Yeah. yeah. What do you safe. think of them? Unbelievable. Nasty jerseys. Too. They're a little tight, though. They, they, came, they came in a little tight, so we're going to look like bodybuilders out there, but <laughs> not complaining. No, I think it's good. You kidding me? One night. Oh, you're sick. This is always one of the signature nights in this building each season. How do you feed off that tonight? Well, yeah, it, I just enjoy it. Like I tell you what, um, every night at Pagula is awesome. Uh, to think that this this night might even be better is is quite a quite a thing to say because the atmosphere in Pagula Ice Arena is the best in college hockey. It's awesome. It, it really. I can speak for all of us in the staff. We love it. We just love it. I know the players love it. Um, so to feed off that, maybe maybe the, the challenge is not to get too high, but uh, it, it's so much fun. Can't wait. Neither could the fans who packed the peg with a new attendance record. Here we go. These Lions were equipped to show their muscle against the Fighting Irish. By the way, those jerseys would be auctioned off for charity, typical of the community spirit this team always displays. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Kevin Wall and Liam Soulier had just been named to the Hobie Baker initial list and were ready to perform, as were all the Lions, on a special night. If there were any pregame jitters, you'd never know it. <laughs> There is not a vacant spot to stand. There's not an empty seat. This is one of the great, I mean, one of the great scenes in college hockey. And they break the attendance record again here tonight, 6,566. As we said, we expected this to be a record-setting night. And they were intent on sending every single one of them home happy. Penn State clears its zone out to center. McLean rumbles to the puck, Penn State numbers. Top of the far circle, centers back, throws it on, score! Goal lit the fuse in a building ready to explode with sheer joy. Part of a two-night offensive barrage of 98 shots thrown at the Notre Dame net. Things were even, but there was a lot more work still to be done. Three seconds left in the power play. Bombs it off the end boards. Back out front. Primo scores! Out of the corner, Janicki to Primo. They connect again, and Notre Dame retakes the lead as the power play concludes. 2-1 Irish. Now they have to come from behind a second time. No problem. As Xander Lampa's pregame flag read, let's work hard. Pickpocketed at center, McMenamin, Penn State 2-1-1. On one. McEachern with Wall, McEachern far circle, lets it fly. He scores! What a And this white clad crowd is going crazy again. New Year's Eve in Times Square looks like a slumber party compared to Pagula after the Connor to Connor connection tied the game. On, but Penn State would not come back again. They didn't have to. With their foot firmly on the gas pedal, they pressured Notre Dame until late in the third period when they were rewarded for their perseverance. Left for your life, left for your life. McKett rumbles between the circles, juggles it on the forehand, turns backhand. Penn State looking for the go-ahead goal. 5.30 left, third period, tie game. Lampa, Sarlo by the net, stuff attempt, score! On 
a team capable of dazzling displays of skill. The game-winning goal was all blue and white collar. On a weekend where they welcomed the one millionth fan to Pagula Ice Arena, the Nittany Lions gave their faithful millions of reasons to prove again that there is no better atmosphere in all of college hockey. On an evening they knew would be one to remember before it even began, they then went out and made it so. On a stage where the spotlight was brilliant, it was a perfect example of what can happen when you dress for success. In November, the Nittany Lions knocked Michigan from the number one spot in the polls. This time, Michigan was chasing Penn State. Number six and number seven, the first time that Penn State and Michigan meet as top 10 teams. Two of the best in the country in two entertaining games. Lampa snipes, score! Ramps off a stick, top shelf! Xander Lampa on the power play! It's Lampa, a power play goal. For Penn State, Xander Lampa struck twice in the second period. Michigan controls, coughed it up, stuff attempt, Lampa, he scores! <laughs> Naples long shot, save Portillo, rebound, stash back on, score! But it was an off night for the blue and white who dropped game one. Penn State coaches dialed up a quicker start for the second game, and if you didn't tune into the Big Ten Network right away, you would have missed some history. Yeah, a phenomenal 103 shot at Kemp's last night. Right there they do, and they score on the opening ship. They get the first goal of the game. They draw first blood. And Gratton speeds through center, gains the Michigan zone. Back door, across, score! Penn State, 38 seconds in as a 1-0 lead. Tyler Gratton up the far wing. After missing Friday's game with an illness, Tyler Gratton quickly made the home team sick on Saturday. Goalie's moving, his fifth of the season, they score again. They score again, and it is now 2-0 Penn State. Penn State, right back into the attacking zone, angled in again, they score! Lampa driving the goal from Tyler Gratton, and it's 2-0 Nittany Lions! Bang, bang, just like that! How about that start for Penn State here on the road? The goals come six seconds apart. It's the fastest that goals have been scored back to back in program history. Genia with Dick. Genia the top of the far circle. Far circle shot. He scores! Danny Genia with a rocket! It was a physical game, and unfortunately, Penn State lost two key forwards. But the battle was there right up until the final seconds. Goes off a body, pinball, scramble there, batted to the goal, right into the goal, Penn State scores! Tor Linden in a net mouth scramble! If you're a hockey purist, it was a great game to watch. But Penn State couldn't help but feel knocked over. Time now to get back up. For Penn State in big games, big time veteran players like Kevin Wall and Connor McEckern can at times put the team on their backs. Next up in a tough stretch were the seventh ranked Ohio State Buckeyes. And it was also a fresh face who was called upon to spark the Nittany Lions, goalie Noah Grannon. the shot. Penn State blocked it. Burger outlet feed. Go out, go out. Penn State struck fast and first. Penn State two on one through center. Wall up the near wing. Near circle. Wall fires. He scores! Five hole Kevin Wall and Penn State strikes early in Columbus. Wall delivered on one end as Granin denied on the other. The Nittany Lions' pace was dictating the game. 
Tyler Gratton behind the goal for Jimmy Dowd. Leaves it near corner. Dylan Gratton in his own zone. Long lead past the center. Off a stick. Grabbed by Tyler Gratton. Penn State two on one. Grattan below the near circle. Got in tight. Throws it out front. Stuffed on. Score! Penn State scores! Connor McEachern got the feed out front and stuffed it past Dobesh. <laughs> two guys that you can count on for big time plays have done it here so far tonight. But Ohio State had won seven of their last nine games and pushed back tying things at two in a game where each looked for the knockout blow. It's a heavyweight battle, there's no space, it's a, it's a slugfest. Simon Mack drills it back down the ice, McEachern gets to it off the inboards, fires, he scores! Connor McEachern buries it, his second of the game! Simon Mack just drilled it into the Buckeye zone. It trampolined off the end boards into the near circle. McEachern motored to the puck, and then he rifled it home to put Penn State up 3 one Penn State provides top-notch competition and remains a hot ticket in away rinks. But those cheering the Buckeyes had reason to believe, as they had come all the way back. Two teams deadlocked at three with under three to play. In his own zone, Kevin Wall. Along the blue line, rink wide near side shade. Returns back to Wall. Scurries into the attacking zone. Drags deep slot shot. He scores! What a snipe by Wall! And Penn State takes the lead! That's a big time player making a big time play! Wall stood tall, but this one was more about a team that doesn't make excuses or look for shortcuts traits instilled by the coaching staff. It's about a team sacrificing for each other, digging deep and revealing their identity, finding a way. In the best conference in college hockey, this is a story where the road to the sky is steep, but the sky is the limit. I'm at a loss for words right now. I'm a little tired, but yeah, I'm just happy we got it done. Nice block, thanks. Great game, boys. Waller, catch way to shoot and get the job done for us. E, thanks for the help back there. It's about a coach who pushes the right buttons. Speak on your team's resiliency and how they were able to bounce back. Yeah, first of all, but this actually is the answer, is it's when you say, and it's appreciated when you say your team. Very much, it is absolutely not my team at all. It is absolutely 100% their team. And I think, to answer your question, that's what, like we were just on the bench, we just let them go. And they, I was really impressed with their demeanor. Uh, the answer is, is because of their team and what they did. Thank <laughs> you.